Russia Ukraine is not perhaps the most important issue for the global south or for India. And that is the point, right? From 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 Nicholas's perch, that's what the UK, uh, the USA are looking at. From India's perch, they've actually got with Russia and China in the room a declaration that everybody, according to Amitabh Khan, has agreed to. And that in itself is a big deal, given that till yesterday we were saying there may not be a declaration. Absolutely, Barkha. I uh, completely, I can empathize with what Nicholas said that, you know, that from the point of view of Britain, it may look different. Now, I'll just speak very briefly from the Indian point of view, because for India, the big economic issues are, of course, of great concern to us. But Ukraine, Russia, as you said, has never really been our primary concern. The real issue for India, if we are looking at geopolitical issues on the fringes of the G20, has lies along 3,500 kilometers of the line of actual control to China. Now, let me be very honest. So from that point of the biggest takeaways uh, of the Delhi Declaration uh, from the point of view of India individually, but also of the global south, are the inclusion of the 55 countries of the African Union. The AU is a big block, you know, and for India, this means both uh, votes in uh, international premiums as well as, especially in the United Nations. And for the global south, it simply means representation and balance of power shifting. The commitment to low cost financing for developing countries, both for low carbon emissions as well as for developmental growth. For India, this means that all those countries that are part of China's BRI or many of them will now get funding elsewhere and they in their turn will in turn will be relieved of this debt trap uh, diplomacy which has been choking them. Uh, debt vulnerability, the same thing, the commitment to debt. Then the use of uh, threat of new, the, the statement which they made on you know touching upon Ukraine. Now it may not have concern, uh, contained any direct criticism of, of Moscow and as I said yesterday on your show uh, that was to be expected that there would be a watered down language. Uh, but it is a win for Delhi because the Western countries ultimately did water down the wording that they had originally demanded. So it, it just goes to show that the Global South is, uh, you know, of increasing importance, Absolutely. as you said. Finally, just one last point. The declaration also reminded people to refrain from threat or use of force to seek territorial acquisition. Now, I think from the Indian point of view, it's a very clear reference to the kind of Chinese attempts at acquisition that we are seeing on our immediate uh, border. Uh, but come yeah. On. I think that's the last point is a very important point about territorial integrity. It was said in the context of, of Russia, Ukraine, but it obviously applies to the new China map. It applies uh, to, to what we're dealing with. The Indians are dealing with. We are dealing with in eastern Ladakh. General uh, Yadav, you know, our, our army is eyeball to eyeball with the Chinese in eastern Ladakh. And I think Padma is very, uh, very right in, in underlining that. And, and to that extent... While there was consensus up until the Delhi de Declaration, what happened after that, this new connectivity corridor, and I will play out what President Biden said in just a moment, that is really important because it is a clear counter to the BRI project of the Chinese. You have the Italians poised to exit that project, so that is also really important. So there's something going on here. Uh, and, and, and somebody, I think, from England, in fact, said on a previous program, so will the G20 then remain this conclave in this shape and form or will the Chinese start seeing it as a sort of anti-Chinese geopolitical forum? General Yadav, go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> Barkha, I've always considered that any project that you want to lay out beyond your sovereign territory, you don't have any control. This is what has happened to BRI. Now, BRI are the road and whatever infrastructure China is making, there is a different country. And each country, you know, they have a pro-China and anti-China lobbies among the politicians. And what are all these poor countries? Their biggest attraction is very easy loans with very uh, minimal uh, uh, preconditions for its allotment, credibility and other things. Wherein at the same time, from the time they took that loan, they knew it, they can't repay it. And this is what is happening in Sri Lanka, in Pakistan, and everywhere else. And this is what Italy has uh, realized. And uh, sure enough, they have uh, decided to, to come out of uh, BRI. And now, the, yeah. uh, next month, uh, there is a conference which is going to be added by Xi Jinping. Uh, around 90 countries are likely to come there. I'm sure there is a lot of friction in the BRI, the terms and conditions, and the way it is progressing. And I'm very sure that with the new initiative, what has been declared now, a new uh, port and uh, railway connectivity to UAE, then Saudi Arabia, then right going yeah. to Israel, and further on to the Eastern Europe and uh, Europe mainland. 
it is going to be a um, uh, means a very good uh, issue because otherwise china thought that they are the only one who were, who were interested and they are capable of doing this kind of a thing so it is an alternative to the pri it is good for the country everybody's focused on russia ukraine what did the declaration say is this almost a bigger deal harsh actually this is a much much bigger deal work i think this uh, if if this can be operationalized this changes the way we would look at our strategic geographies uh, and the way we connect with them because ultimately uh, the whole drive behind china's so called rise has been that it was able to articulate a vacuum in the global economic order and that was the the deficit of connectivity and once china announced bri it was almost the announcement of china's coming of age as a partner that can be depended upon now as that has started unraveling i think a lot of the low and middle income countries are asking where are the alternatives where do we go for alternatives and i think what india has done relatively interestingly is to say that look we are in no position to match china dollar for dollar but we are in a position to build partnerships with like minded countries so our partnerships are our way of entering uh, other nations and and perhaps the hearts of other uh, other, other, other nationalities because that is our way of doing business we don't we are not looking at it block wise we are looking at it in terms of partnerships we are looking at it as a bottom up approach to a uh, developmental agenda and i think this is very well synced in with the larger g20 agenda which talked about connectivity which talks about inclusive economic growth and which talks about balancing globalization again an important point that that i think has been part of india's g20 agenda that globalization perhaps is not dead but we need to revive faith in globalization by making it more inclusive by making it more diverse and by bringing in the developing and low income countries into the mix and i think this can really change the dynamic if it is operationalized and if everyone well, what, 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 what do you think the, what do you think the chinese are feeling about it they're still here the chinese premier is in town well i think you know in some ways uh, china is i mean uh, look uh, if china had created an alternative uh, or or given as an alternative paradigm where it would it, it were uh, to be more inclusive where where india and other countries would felt inclusive uh, felt part of it where it, it would not, it was not challenging the territorial integrity of other nations i think a lot of this would be uncontroversial right who doesn't want infrastructure connectivity economic partnerships yes. but ultimately if you go it Uh, go into this project with a with a with a you, you know with a unilateral instinct i think that creates a problem and i think india has provided a good a good antidote to this to this and i think that's that's what very is very interesting about a lot of the other partnerships as well not simply this but also yeah. when we are talking about uh, with japan uh, with asean uh, we, you know uh, prime minister presented a 12 point agenda in the in the asean summit which was also about connectivity so i think connectivity and india's role in, in in building bridges with various geographies is going to be very important part of india's economic diplomacy going forward right and of course the the you know you have the italian prime minister also commenting on this and as i said that the italians are poised to 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 withdraw from the bri project and she said today is the launch of a new economic cor- corridor between india and the middle east and europe and 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 this is this is a milestone and i just want to bring in nicolas to to wonder whether you might be somewhat more uh, you know taken by this development than than you were with uh, what you thought was a very mild russia ukraine reference nicholas uh, most definitely yes uh, because i see this as much more um forward looking much more relevant to what i think the g20 is about or should be about but i was intrigued by your question to the previous speaker uh, is china going to be upset by this because you do make it sound a bit like a competition and i suppose it is a competition i can't it is really isn't it that. i mean isn't it um, it is a competition it's a competition it's... for influence through aid in a way because as far as the western well as far as the big powers are concerned it's about giving aid to Uh, I, 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 I don't mean to interrupt you, but I don't think that's how India would see it. But I just wanted to say that on no. record and then let you complete your point. Do go ahead. No, uh, well, yes. I, I, I accept your qualification there. Perhaps I shouldn't be using the word aid, but it is. Um, uh, let's just stick with communication, which is what the word Mr. Biden used. Um, it is to some extent a competition, and it goes back to what the G20 is about. 